Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good night. Uh, welcome to the workshop at the Things Conference 2021. I'm Mark, I'm developer advocate at Valena. Hello, and I'm Jose Marcelino, a solutions architect at Rack Wireless. Very, very cool to be here. Doing this. On today's workshop, we are going to talk about some gateway fundamentals, like the latest uh, state of the art of the LoRaWAN gateways with the basic station. And then we will show you how to create your fleet of LoRaWAN gateways in a really simple way to do it. Let me show the outline, what we are going to talk today. So on the menu today, uh, we are going to talk about yeah, the LoRaWAN gateway fundamentals, basic station, and we will build together. Some of you actually have some uh, hardware. Uh, so we'll, we will build together uh, the, the first basic station LoRaWAN gateway right now here in some minutes. And then we will show you how to do something else with your LoRaWAN gateways. And finally, we will get into a Q&A. So you live will be able to ask us as many questions as you want. All yours, Jose, with your part of the presentation. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Uh, I'll just give a brief introduction because this is a, a fundamental session. Just what, what is LoRaWAN? How does it work? Uh, so very brief. So like high level physical, I like giving the the physical image of what the network is, well, the components first. So on the here on the left, we have the nodes. This is what actually captures the data as the sensors connected. Uh, another el important element are the gateways. Uh, this collect all the radio uh, frequency data from the sensors and they uh, they process it and then they forward that in a specific format to usually some cloud server, uh, which will contain other elements. I'll talk about uh, in the next slide. And finally, what you get at the end of, of that is your data in a, in a nice way that you can actually uh, process it on some uh, dashboard or uh, analytics solution. So the important thing here is that on the left side, we have this thing with the LoRa radio. This is all uh, using LoRa uh, physical uh, radio. And on the other side, we have an internet connection. Uh, just uh, on this on kind of the layer structure of LoRa one. So at the top, we have the application. This is what what you your own thing. What does it do? Does it show on the dashboard? What data does it want? Then we have kind of the, the lower one second level. This is this is starting to be the the, def the standard definition of LoRa. So here the standard says you can have three classes of devices. Class A, which is generally what you use, it's just devices which send to um, to the LoRa side to the cloud and then wait for a reply. So they're not always on. Then we have class B, which are uh, smarter nodes which are able to, to know when the network will be sending data to them and also class C which just means the network the, the, the device is always listening for commands from the network side but you don't need to understand all of, all of this don't worry on uh, on the regional parameters this just this is the way the um, the radio frequencies are defined for for the sensors and the gateways so they need to know both both sides of the communication needs to know which frequencies they're using so they they know what to be listening on and uh, on transmitting on and this is set by something called the regional parameters in the lora one specification it just gives us a, a, a list of numbers of of how, how things should operate. On top of that, we have the physical layer. This is how the actual radio uh, is modulated, so how the data is encoded in the radio side to meet that LoRa1 specification. Uh, typical LoRa1 gateway, like this is the one you should have on your desk, hopefully. And <laughs> we, this is a, a, a LoRa1 gateway is kind of a, it's a complex device, but we it's very integrated so there is one main uh, chip which is uh, the concentrated chip which does almost everything uh, except the actual radio side uh, so that that chip talks to uh, a computer device like the raspberry pi 
over some USB or something called SPI bus. Uh, and that that really so that listening on all eight frequencies or more that the LoRa one specification uh, defines, listening for sensors coming in, and then uh, it it kind of does all the error correction and everything that's needed to capture the data from from the sensors. But this is the very very physical layer. Uh, so you talk usually on your device and in, in this case we will have the the fin the valena fin talking with uh, this concentrator card doing all this this work um, now i'm moving on to the the basic station part of this talk which is more um, so i talked about the gateway side that's kind of the radio uh, physical things and the, on the logical side we also have the the net, all the network servers that are needed for LoRaWAN. Uh, so you can see uh, it looks a bit complex, but uh, it's just the modular way this is done. So we have a gateway server, which this is the part which actually talks with the gateways over the internet. And you have to think that gateways don't and uh, don't know what what they're not very smart, so they just do whatever the gateway server tells them to do. So it's the gateway server role to know when to send data, which at the precise timings and um, and what data to send as well. So how is it encoded, encrypted, etc. So it's all done by the, the gateway server. Um, then you finally uh, you have uh, other layers like finally the data flows through the through the network server and finally exits and connects to your cloud whatever cloud you use uh, but on this talk i'll just be i'm just mentioning this uh this part here so you see because people don't don't really care much about this part but it's really important because it connects the gateways uh so the outside world to your application so for this part where the gateway connects to that to the network server you can have there are ma two main protocols so traditionally gateways have been using uh, something called the semtech udp packet forwarder this is uh, the the very first protocol developed it was designed as a proof of concept not not for production at all but then it kind of became took off became the standard um, <laughs> much to the regret of its developer uh, uh, so the problem is it's it has no built-in authentication or encryption which in today's world is just insane um, it also relies on UDP protocol this means the connections are not reliable and and it is very difficult to cross firewalls or uh, NAT servers which are very typical in today's internet and there are also no uh, gateway management options available on this protocol. So what people end up usually doing for professional installs is adding a lot of layers on top of this protocol, uh, like a VPN, server, other like management servers, everything on top of this, making it very complex to, to deploy. To solve this problem, uh, Semtech and the LoRa Alliance created um, a new protocol this is called the LoRa basic station it's kind of a strange name because basics implies that it's um, yeah it's not very good <laughs> but uh, but actually this is the latest and developed from scratch for deployment for mass deployment and this is now what uh, the the things stack used by the things network um, uses as well uh, it offers both authentication and encryption uh, so uses normal standard TLS encryption. It uses web sockets. So this uses this is built on top of HTTP and HTTPS. So very easy to cross uh, like firewalls and NAT servers. And also finally offers uh, gateway management. And yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Let's uh, let's move on to the cool part. <laughs> all right. So let's jump into the um, yeah to the fun part. So how to manage your fleet of gateways or your gateway. Or how Valena can help to you to reduce friction creating gateways. 
Actually, if it's if this is not your first um, TTN or uh, the Things conference, we have been already here. So actually, in two thousand eighteen, I think it was the first the Things conference. We were presenting actually as well with Rack how to build your own gateway with the Rack A through thirty one with Resin IO. <laughs> actually, Balena was called before Resin .io. So if you were there, so you learn how to build your own gateway with the previous Rack concentrator with Resin IO now Balena, and then two years ago with Pi Supply we did another workshop about remote management of the Things Network gateways. This year we wanted to show you something more. On this edition, we wanted to show you, yeah, how to build your own gateway in a, even in a more simple way than in previous editions, how to remote manage it, how to connect it to the things stack, which, which is actually something kind of a little bit different than the things network. And finally, how to give more functionalities to your gateway. Okay. That we will see in a bit. In case that you don't know Belena, maybe you know this software. This is Belena Etcher. And we are actually the developers of Balena Etcher. Balena Etcher, it's a software to flash SD cards, USB sticks, and so on in a really simple way. And that's what we like to do at Balena. We like to reduce friction on doing simple things. In this case, flashing SD cards, hard disk, or USB sticks. If you have been using Balena Etcher, you know how we do software. And probably most of you say, I am going to have just one LoRa gateway or one yeah, I have a one Raspberry Pi. It's simple to, to manage. But then when you start having multiple devices, how do you manage that? If you want not have the same hardware on your fleet of devices connected, how do you manage that? How do you change the software? How do you improve your yeah, next version? How do you solve bugs on, on your software, on your fleet of devices? And if your devices are not on your table and are spread all around the world, or like can happen on, on, on a lower one gateway, right? Uh, how do you do that? So this is what we do at Belena. We help companies that are connecting devices, a lot of devices, to manage their software and to easily yeah, deploy new releases uh, on their hardware in a really easy way. Another important thing at Belena, it's all the software that runs on devices managed by Belena use Docker containers. We think that Docker containers are really important to develop uh, the new applications on the Internet of Things. And this is why everything that runs on Balena must run on a, on a container. Um, every device that runs on Balena Cloud needs to run the Balena operating system. The Balena operating system, it's an open source Linux operating system based on the Octo project. And it has some differences with that. So it runs yeah, the Linux kernel based on the Octo project, as I said before as a user space, and then it runs a kind of Docker uh, system for IoT devices that we made ourselves, that it's as well open source, but actually there are some parts that we only provide the binary, that it's Balen Engine. So Balen Engine, it's kind of Docker, and everything that runs on a Balena device runs on a Balena OS on the top of this. So everything will run on containers managed by the supervisor. And these are the products that we have. We have, as I mentioned before, the Valena OS, Valena Cloud to manage all your fleet of devices, the Valena Engine to manage the containers, Valena Etcher to flash the SD cards, or as we are going to see on a second, the compute module of the Valena Fin, the Valena Fin, that is a hardware. If you need a more reliable Raspberry Pi for industrial environment or harsh environment, we built a hardware for that. And finally, we also have uh, Open Valena, which is like the open source flavor uh, Balena Cloud. So with Balena, uh, this makes it really easy, right, to deploy uh, because you don't need to understand a lot of Linux management or uh, anything else. And also the, the containers, I guess, makes everything safe, right, and secure because if one part has a problem, then it doesn't affect the other parts, I guess. So Exactly. I actually, actually, I started with... Uh, <laughs> With Balena, with Balena, uh, my first TTN gateway was using resin back then um, in <laughs> 2016. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> it's been used a lot. Building this software on containers, um, it's bringing this uh, tool that uh, we think that it's very important for IoT developers that run Linux uh, single board computers. Uh, because it helps to bring these new tools of, of software development into into the IoT that we think it's important. 
Um, on the other hand, um, we don't like the lock-ins. So if even if you stop using Balena, you will have a software that can run in any operating system that can run containers. Because they're all standard containers, right? So there's no yeah, exactly. no lock-in. Great. So yeah, let's stop talking and let's create our first gateway. Yeah. So <laughs> get your hardware ready. As I told before, some of you have been awarded with this. This is a Valena Fin. A Valena Fin, it's like a Raspberry Pi 3 because it runs a compute module 3. So let me get, get more into more details on the Fin. I told you that this is like a Raspberry Pi on steroids. It's for industrial environments or harsh environments. And why we built a hardware at Valena? We built a hardware because we wanted to help our customers that most of them are, are running Raspberry Pis to scale in, a, in an easy way on this kind of environments. So it accepts different types of electricity uh, from this barrel jack, um, the Phoenix uh, power in, or as well from the POI adapter here. On the other hand, you can connect two cameras. And finally, um, another thing that is interesting is that here next to the where the compute module goes, uh, you have an EMC. So you don't need an SD card to run, uh, to work with a fin. Another thing that is interesting, it has an MPCIe here. And something that makes it very different, you know, it's that it runs a coprocessor. But this is this is it. That has a special GPIO here. And for version superior to Balena Fin 1.1, the magic part is that the coprocessors can sleep in the compute module. So you can get a Raspberry Pi uh, running into very low power uh, energy, 0.02 milliamps. Um, so that's really interesting. So maybe we can get into some examples in other workshops during the Things conference. No worries. If you don't have a Valena Fin with you right now, that's not a problem. So this workshop uh, is compatible with the Raspberry Pi 3 and Raspberry Pi 4. So if at home you have Raspberry Pi 3 and Raspberry Pi 4, the Rack 2245 or the Rack, <laughs> I have all the collection, 2287, you can follow this uh, workshop um, step by step. But just before getting into the workshop, do you, would you like to explain a little bit more about uh, the Rack 2245 concentrator? Yes, true. So the Rack uh, 2245 concentrator is uh, it's a full Laura one gateway. So it, it handles eight channels. This is eight different frequencies of, of Laura. So you can be sending on with many, many devices at the same time. So because it not only does the eight frequencies, then it also does different spreading factors on each frequency. So the combinations are uh, massive. It's very small, so it's like fits perfectly on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you just connect an antenna and uh, off you go. Very simple. So maybe what's the difference between the 2245 and the 2287? The 2287 has a newer concentrated chip, so that it's lower power. You don't really see a much a bigger difference in most applications, uh, but if you were concerned about power or um, the heat that's dissipated, the 2287 is, is a lot better. For mm -hmm. for the workshop, it, they work the same, they do the same thing, same um, listen on all the frequencies and channels, so they're functionally the same. So before cooking, <laughs> this is the <laughs> what we have on the menu. Yeah. I would strongly recommend, first of all, create a Valena.io account. Meanwhile, we explain uh, next steps. Uh, it's a free account. You can connect up to 10 gateways or 10 devices for free, forever. Second, we will deploy this basic session, uh, lower one gateway, and we will connect it to the things stack. Third, uh, we will add a container, actually, to this gateway that, for me, it's very useful, that we are going to add more features into the gateways. We have been showing in the past how to build a lower gateway. But with Balena, because it works with containers, it's very easy to give other features. So we are going to show something simple, how to add a container called Wi-Fi Connect into the gateway. What, how does it help? So it helps a lot, because it happened to me. If you have to move your Loran gateway, imagine that you connect your gateway with Wi-Fi, and you have to move it from one place to another, or you change your Wi-Fi at home. How can you change the Wi-Fi credentials of your of your gateway. With this container, um, 
when the when the device uh, when the operating system uh, when the operating system cannot connect to the Wi-Fi credentials that you gave it in the beginning, what it happens is that uh, it makes that the the fin becomes a hotspot, mm -hmm. and from the mobile phone you connect to the Wi-Fi generated by the hotspot, and then you can change the Wi-Fi credentials. It restart and it connects the Wi-Fi that you gave the credentials from the mobile phone. Like sometimes in a hotel, no, you, to connect to the to the Wi-Fi, you have to do something like this. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how it works. Uh, how it works, the Wi-Fi connect. And I think that feature will be really interesting uh, to have on our gateways from now. On the yeah, on the final session, if we have time, we will show you some projects that we are working on in order to provide more features or more interesting things on the on the gateways. So let's start, Jose. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Hope that you have created a Valena.io account. Let's just start. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> I have many accounts there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's deploy the basic session gateway on the things stack. So to do that, I'm going to do it in a really easy way. Um, I'm going to use something new that we have at Balena. But it's a Balena Hub. So I recommend you to go to hub.balena.io. The Balena Hub, it's a marketplace for IoT Edge applications. And our goal is that clicking just deploy with Balena, you can install on your Pi, on your Fin, or on all this more than 60 different hardware compatible with Valena, an application on that device immediately. So actually here we have a lot. Uh, no, let's not play to Minecraft yet. Uh, no Red, Home Assistant, <laughs> what is the gateway? Yeah, it's here. <laughs> so yeah, some months ago with Jose, we built the, the Things Network uh, gateway with Basic Station. And now for this workshop, we adapted to the Things stack. So we are going to click Deploy with Valena. Actually, we see that it's compatible with Valena Fin, Pi 3, Pi 3 64-bit. Actually, at Valena OS uh, supports Valena 3 on 64-bit, so Valena or Raspberry Pi 4. Um, actually, I test this workshop on Pi 4 and Fin. So yeah, it should work. Uh, what we are going to show here is that we are going to create a fleet of devices where uh, actually the software of the gateway uh, that belongs to Jose and mine share the same software. Okay, we use different uh, the things the stack accounts, but the software it's managed from one unique point. So Jose or me, we can update the software of our gateways, and they run always on the latest version. So let's click deploy with Belena here, and this will redirect us to. Uh, to the Valena account. So I will say that I will create uh, a new application that it's called, uh, let's say, the Things Conference 2021. The device type is a fin. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if we untoggle this, we are going to see on advanced, uh, yeah, this can be starter or, uh, or uh, uh, whatever you have selected. That's not, that's okay. I'm not going to get into that. Um, if we if you toggle on advanced, you're going to see that yeah, there is this is the GitHub repo that we are going to copy. That actually you can access from Hub. Clicking on read more, you get into the repo. Yep. Okay, with all the instructions as well to install it and the button of the play with Belena that we see on on the Hub. And we see some variables that we need to fill in a second. Okay, this is actually these variables work for. Um, for the things network and will work in a bit for the things stack. Something interesting, if you have, a, as I told you, this workshop is compatible with the, Belen, with the Rack 2245 concentrator, but as well with the 2287. So if you, have a, if you are here watching this and you have a Rack 2287, the latest one, so you only need to change this model Rack 2245 by 2287 mm. and click the create and deploy, okay? If you do it later, that's not a problem, OK? In this case, we are going to do it for Rack 2245. So I click Create and Deploy. And what's going to happen here? So we are Balena Cloud. It's creating an application. And it's deploying the source code on this GitHub repo. Uh, it's releasing this and creating uh, all the Docker uh, containers into the Balena Cloud mm -hmm. in order that when there is a device here, it will download 
uh, the, the code that we are releasing right now. So we can see here the, that it's building the release from that Git, that GitHub repo. I'm going to invite Jose here. So I'm going to add member, okay. Jose Marcelino, if I'm not wrong. It's, this is your Balena username, right? So I will add you as uh, with full access to devices and applications as a developer. Okay. Okay. So we can see the release is running right now. That means that yeah, the, the Docker containers are here built. Next thing that we have to do is we need to add a device, and that will download the the Lena OS image that we we will need to flash into the into the Valena fin. Click Add Device. We select the operating system type. I, I prefer. Uh, so we are going to use on this demo the Balena OS. <clears throat> the supervisor. That's okay. The recommended. We will say production. That's okay. We will say Wi-Fi plus Ethernet. We are going to create the Wi-Fi. I'm going to introduce the Wi-Fi credentials because my phone will be created with, will be connected by Wi-Fi in this case. Okay. Now I click Download Balena OS. So. That will download a Valena OS, uh, an operating system image with the Wi Fi credentials inserted on that. Okay, it's downloading. Okay, my Valena OS, it's uh, downloaded. And now we need Valena Etcher. This is, I show you Valena Etcher at the beginning of this talk, uh, the software to flash SD cards or EMC memories. Um, okay, I, I told you that uh, you have Valena Fin 1.0. All the instructions are online, but yeah, just to follow this workshop, um, to flash the EMC, the EMMC of the fin with a, a fin 1.0, you will need to connect first the US the micro USB with the cable on your, to your computer, and second the barrel jack. If you have Valena fin 1.1 or 1.1.1, you only need to connect it with a micro USB. Okay, so let's do it. Let's flash uh, with HR. Um, so I go to HR, flash from file. I select the thing, San Francisco 2021 for fin. I need to connect my fin. By the way, before flashing the Valena fin, you need to introduce the, the compute module on the fin if you already don't, haven't done that. So actually put it here and you need to do like a click. Okay. Now you can flash the, the fin. Let's do it. Okay, so the compute module now it's initializing, and then the compute module will give us access to the the memory, the EMMC that it's on the fin. Actually, to give, to do some more advertisement about Belena, we are releasing the Belena HR Pro. So if you need to flash like dozens of fins or SD cards or USB sticks at the same time, we are getting into the market uh, the Belena HR Pro, which is a hardware that runs Belena HR. Okay, select compute module and flash. I need to use my password and mark. And yeah, it's the compressing and flashing. So if you need to flash dozens of SD cards at the same time, we have a hardware. We built a hardware to do that in a really simple way, actually using Bolin Cool. And can you flash the fins as well? Sure, yeah. You can flash the fins. Um, and you will be, and you can flash compute modules as well with uh, tiny hardware. Great. But yeah. Okay. Now it's validating. Okay. Once we will have the fin flashed with no errors, uh, let's hope that um, we will unplug the USB, uh, the micro USB, and the barrel jack, and then we will connect only the barrel jack to the to the fin. Okay. Mm -hmm. In case that you are using, yeah, the 1.1 or 1.1.1, you are doing just a flashing with a micro USB. Just un, yeah, unplug the micro USB and correct the barrel jack. Okay, I have the barrel jack here, and we'll power it up. But before before that, I will introduce the rack concentrator here, and let's power it up. It's interesting to see. That the that the concentrator gets some LEDs on. Okay, uh, that's important, right, Jose? Yeah, the, you want to watch out for the green light. So there is um, there's going there's going to be a green LED. That's the power LED. So it tells you that it's receiving power. You want that 
on. Okay, so if you introduce it properly, the Wi-Fi credentials flash correctly, the, um, the fin or the Raspberry Pi or whatever you are using, at some point, you will see that on your application uh, on Belina Cloud, uh, your devices appear. Okay, and they, once they appear, third thing that Belina OS does is to create a container with a supervisor on the host OS. And the supervisor will connect to the, to the Belina Cloud and will ask, hey, is there any uh, container or is there any application for me? And Belina Cloud will say yes on our uh, no, release. We have uh, yeah, white water. Is this mine or yours, Jose? That's yours. Okay. Mine is still going online. Actually, I, we can check on the... Yeah, so I'm Mine. based in Barcelona. Jose is based in the UK. How does it know? <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not here, so that's okay. But let's check the releases. Yeah, the release succeeded. Check mm -hmm. here because sometimes the release failed. And you can see the, build, the logs here on the release. So that's uh, something that's really interesting. And now what we see here is that when, when the device gets created, um, the supervisor starts and then start downloading the latest image. I'm gonna change the name just to clarify <laughs> that this is mine. Mark Fenn. Okay, Jose, how are you doing? Are you, you're, how's your Fenn getting? Are you getting the Fenn into Valina Cloud? Yeah, it's uh, it should be connecting now. Should be. Let's should be. get fingers crossed that it gets connected. Yeah, cool. We have a wow. nice resonance. Yeah, so let's let's see. So we'll, excellent that it appeared on the cloud already. Let's me click. Let me click on it. Still nice says updating. It's, it just takes a little bit. My internet is a bit slow here, so it's downloading now the main. It's, and it's going to happen like the uh, the one that I show mine. That actually, first execution that it does, it gets the Ethernet MAC address, right? Yeah. And we put it as a tag. So it's really simple to copy and paste the UI of the um, of the device. So meanwhile, you created an account at the things stack, right, Jose? Yeah, that's true. So uh, once you create there, you get into the nice place. You just go into gateways get all your list of gateways, and then you can get ready by selecting that gateway, choose a, a gateway ID, I will call this um, the Rack TTC 2021. Uh, then you need that UI that will copy from there, just uh, demo gateway in UK. Um, frequency plan depends on which region you're in. Uh, yeah, in our case, we're in Europe. Well, you're in the UK, I don't know if there will be any frequency. <laughs> That's we'll we'll <laughs> Yeah, we'll be changing soon. Uh, okay, let's see how this is going. This is still downloading. Almost done. Okay. Cool. And we have the UI now as a tag, which is really convenient. So just copy that. This way, I just put it in the description as well. Ah, oh, okay, cool. That's a good idea. So that's good. So I see how other people here. use it. Uh, yep. Yeah. And I created. Uh, right. So the next step uh, is you need to create an API key. This uh, is what actually gives permission to Belinda the Belinda setup to connect to the things uh, the things network and this is again like that uh, security aspect of, of uh, basic station so you only need to grant one individual right which is link as a gateway to the gateway server so you create that API key then you can copy that and I'll leave that there for a little while. I come back here to to my Belinda screen, and now I choose. Uh, so I can use it as a device variable. Is that the best option? Sure. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. So I go here to device variable. I add a variable, which will be TC key, 
and I just paste that key I got I just got from the the things network. We need uh, we need to change the TC URI. This is this is again pointing to the old server. So for that uh, we go back to here. I say I have copied my key. So if you go back to your gateway, you can see the gateway server address there. You just copy that, paste it into the Balena, and then you select override here so you can type a new one. So WSW, uh, WSS means WebSocket secure, right? Yes, that's right. So you need to add that part. You need to keep that part. This is what, what you explain about the, the, the basic station is secure. That's uh, right. No, it has the security, the encryption. Yes, it uses certificates, DLS certificates for everything. Uh, so, but that's already included in the Berlin image. So we add the root certificates for the things uh, network, which is also the same for the things stack. And finally, we need um, a port number, which is this part. I never remember. Eight 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 seven. It is eight eight seven. Yeah. So just add that. So now Balena does it ma does its magic, right? It just updates my my device because I set it as a device variable. Exactly. Every time that you introduce a device variable or you modify a device variable, the device gets restarted with a new device variable. Yeah. So it should all work. And there we go. We actually, yeah, we can see by the last scene that the gateway has connected uh, like thirty seconds ago. And yeah, it's already ready, ready to, to go. And um... <laughs> so maybe if you are here, you have already seen the workshop of Wizblocks. If not, probably on the YouTube or on the, the Things Conference website, you will see the you will see the workshop of Wizblocks. Just um, to... Uh, how to program it in Arduino. Yeah. yeah. Cool. But so... you've, yours is set up, so I guess we can. Uh... Exactly. Maybe we can show this later with a Wi-Fi Connect uh, version. Okay. But now, yeah, you see how easy it's to get a Flora One gateway. Yeah. So we see a, a fleet of Flora gateways in the middle of nowhere, yeah. and they are managed by the same software that it's on the uh, repo that we showed you before in the GitHub repo. Mm -hmm. So this is how easy it's to manage a fleet of gateways spread all, all over the world in a really simple way with a thin stack. So now we have two LoRaWAN gateways sending data from LoRaWAN, LoRa nodes to the things stack. So let's imagine that now you need to change your gateway from to another place and you need the Wi-Fi credentials, a new Wi-Fi credentials. How can we do that? You know, with, uh, so I can tell you some ways to change it with the network uh, manager on the operating system and get into kind of low level uh, on operating systems. But actually, because it's a single board computer, it's a powerful device, uh, and it's run, running a Linux operating system with containers, maybe we can introduce a new container that can manage that for us. And this is what we are going to do. We are going to install Wi-Fi Connect container, and we are going to show you how easy it is to have a multi-container uh, device uh, running on Balena. Um, that can help all your fleet of LoRaWAN gateways yeah. to change Wi-Fi credentials in a really simple way. Okay, so to, um, we will start from scratch. Uh, what does it mean that before I we install the LoRaWAN gateway on the fin from Balena Hub? That was super simple. Click the play with Balena, and it's super smooth to do this process. It's it's very. We are gonna show you something a little bit more advanced, but it's as well kind of simple, okay? You will need a GitHub credentials first, and you will need as well to install the Balena CLI uh, software in your computer, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna show that on the workshop, so if you are watching the replay, it's not live, just stop here and just go to download those uh, or create a GitHub uh, repository account if you don't have it, but uh, let me show you how to do. So first of all, get into your terminal and create a, a, a directory. I will say the things conference 2021. Okay, so we, we have nothing here. First thing that we are gonna do is we are gonna clone the basic station uh, repository. 
so yeah, you will need as well the git CLI. So I will say git clone basic station. And next thing that we are going to do, because we are going to need two containers, the, the basic station and the Wi-Fi connect, it's to clone the Wi-Fi connect uh, container. Mm. So it's so Wi-Fi connect Valena. If you Google that, you will get into the GitHub repo. And we are going to do the same, actually. We're going to just get these and do git clone. OK. So now we have, yeah, if we do these, we have two projects together on, under the same directory. Each one has a Docker file template uh, with the Docker file template. It's the recipe uh, for the, to build the Docker container. Mm -hmm. Now we have to do, to create a multi-container device, we need to create a Docker Compose. Okay, Docker Compose, it's a way to tell to, to Belena that this device has different uh, Docker, Docker containers. And I'm going to do it with BI. I don't know if you love BI or not, Jose. BI is the best, yes. BI is life. <laughs> let's do it. OK, so let's start creating the Docker Compose. I zoom in a bit uh, this. Hope you can see it. If not, the, the code will be on a repo. So it's a version of the Docker Compose 2.1. Actually, at, at Valena, we support up to 2.1. I think there is there are uh, further versions on Docker. But we support 2.1. That should be OK. And then we will say that we have different services. Um, in this case, um, we have basic station. Uh, the, and we will say build. So we ha because we have the code, it's on basic station uh, folder. And then we have, yeah, because we have to get access to the to the Ethernet uh, MAC address, we need to get a uh, network uh, mode host. And we will give some pri privilege. OK. Now for the Wi-Fi Connect, I'm going to paste it from the repo. <laughs> so if you come here, we explain how to, yeah, what exactly you need to get a Wi-Fi connect on a multi-container application on Balena OS. So just paste this here. And we just uh, record this. So now it's time to, if you have installed Balena CLI, it's time to do Balena login. Now with Balena login, you will get the credentials from the web page. I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to do Balena push the things conference 2021 that it's how the application it's how our application on on the Belena cloud it's called right it's the things conference 20, 2021 and we have uh, these two devices okay the two Belena push to the Belena OS application maybe if you do it with pi you can get an error of identification maybe it's good as well to use an ide to do it like visual code or similar. Just a recommendation in case that you get errors when you do Belena push for problems with the indentation. If you don't have problems, um, the the code will start um, releasing into the Belena cloud builders. Okay, so after some minutes of Belena push, now we have, we, if we see Charlie the unicorn that you see here, Good that sign, means right? that, <laughs> sorry, say again. It's a good sign, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So seeing a unicorn, it's a, always, I think it's always a, a good sign. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what we see here is that we, we deploy the basic station and the Wi-Fi Connect containers, both containers that we had on the Docker Compose. We see both uh, devices. Let me get into yours. Oh, let's see the look in the map. Yeah, I will get into yours. And we see that, yeah, so now we have the gateway with a very useful um, new container that it's a Wi-Fi connect. So in case that you change the, the, the gateway from, from your house to another place that needs different uh, Wi-Fi credentials. So what is going to happen, it's really simple. So the Finn or the Raspberry Pi uh, will see that, yeah, the Wi-Fi credentials doesn't match with anything that it's on their network manager 
files, so it, it will uh, uh, start creating uh, an access point. So from your mobile phone, actually, you will be able to get into this captive portal um, of the Wi-Fi Connect container and just introduce the Wi-Fi credentials of the new Wi-Fi of your place. And then the, the, the access, well, the device will stop the access point and connect to the new Wi-Fi. That's simple. And actually, we didn't have time, but next thing that I wanted to show you, but I just challenge you all on, in the audience to do it. It's to make this a smart bird watcher together with a, with the Laura One Gateway. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so what's a better place no, to put a, a Laura One Gateway than a tree and make a bird feeder and have like a, some containers uh, taking pictures of the and doing bird uh, face classification with edge impulse, <laughs> which it's actually on the things conference as well somewhere. So go go to listen to their talks, make some bird classification, get pictures of your uh, of of the birds on Telegram on your phone. Oh. Meanwhile, the same device is a LoRa one gateway. Yeah, that's yeah. that's incredible. So that's, it doesn't, yeah. and doesn't affect anything. It still works fine. And yeah, just because you have a lot of uh, CPU, right? You can run a lot of exactly. stuff in there. Yeah, makes sense. Um, Sounds like fun. Yeah, let's make it a challenge so people come up with crazy ideas for gateways. That's cool. Thing. So just to connect with other workshops and talks on the Things Conference. Uh, so this this workshop it's Tuesday morning here in Europe. But uh, other workshops that are interesting it's Swissblocks. But another one that it's pretty interesting it's on, uh, it's about Blues um, IO that it's making a LoRaWAN gateway with the same basic station. Uh, connected with cellular connectivity and a rack uh, concentrator, right? So don't miss it. Uh, absolutely don't miss it. Yeah, it's, well. it's good. And the cool thing is they're all using basic station, right? Because it's the best one for for cellular. It uh, it doesn't drop like UDP drops on cellular, so it avoids a lot of problems. Yeah, so there were some problems, right, on with the UDP connection of the... Yeah, because cellular networks are always uh, have a NAT, a network address translator in the middle. Uh, uh, actually, have sometimes several levels, and they, they time out the connections very often. So then you just lose connectivity, and you don't know why, because it's it's deep inside, like a cellular network you don't have access to. So this way uses UDP TCP, so it's all the connection is, is maintained, so everything is there. So let's wrap up uh, the session, Jose. Mm -hmm. Yep. We started uh, with like an introduction to the, the LoRa One. what are gateways and how, how basic station is the new cool protocol to connect them to, to the cloud, how it's, how it's been designed for that. And we, we introduced then how to create that very easily in Balena. Uh, no, just with the click of a button from Balena Hub. It's incredible. Uh, no effort at all. You just type in, just fill in two fields and you connect it to the, the new thing stack as well, which is also excellent. Uh, and, uh, and then, yeah, Mark, you showed a great example of just adding more services to to the gateway, adding Wi-Fi Connect, which is really useful. Uh, all using, all based on the Fin, which is also a great device, very robust, uh, industrial, all sorts of, you can fit it with lots of voltages, it doesn't, <laughs> yeah, it's great, great, great piece of hardware. Um, and yeah, and then why not add more services to the gateway, because you've got all this CPU there, the basic station is uses less than five percent of the CPU, so you've got you've got a lot of room to play with. And why not categorize birds? Sounds good. <laughs> exactly with that impulse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. That's I think amazing. that was all. Let's let's get ready for the Q and A. Hope that there are a lot of questions. Yeah. Hope so. Look forward to that. Okay. See you Thank now. You all. Let's read you.